Sambatskanu Monguchu, and welcome to Talk With Me. Melanie Koki is an American woman who has been living in Mongolia since 1998. She is married to a Mongolian man whom she describes as her best friend. Together they have four beautiful children and reside in Ulaanbaatar, where Melanie is co-host of Eagle TV and C1 TV's popular program Hoyer Edge Arun Hochted, or in English, Two Moms, Ten Children. Melanie Koki, welcome to you, my friends. Good to see Thank you here you. today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. I was wondering when I was going to get asked on the show. Listen, you were one of the first <laughs> on my list, and um, well, for many reasons, but one of the, the most important reasons I've wanted to have you on the show uh, is because of your amazing television program, Hoyer Edge Aro Hochet. Tell me a little bit about this show. Well, um, thank you for calling it amazing. It's been a, quite a ride, to tell you the truth. I never um, envisioned myself on television at all, you know, much less in a different language than my own. And uh, so when a friend of mine approached me and asked me, to do this, I was very hesitant. You know, I thought there was no way that I could do it. But um, when I met my co-host for the first time, it sort of sealed the deal. And mm -hmm. she's just um, a really, she's a really neat lady, and she's the mother of six kids. And six children, yeah, like and the she's, Brady Bunch. She's she's a year younger than me. But when we talked, we we both really just agreed on on the important things um, that. And we, we, we agreed that, you know, moms tend to be, uh, we, we put ourselves through so many things sometimes unnecessarily. Yeah. And, uh, you know, comparing and, and, and thinking that, you know, we should be doing everything and managing everything. And mm -hmm. um, it's so easy to become overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And so our goal was to encourage young moms all over the nation of Mongolia mm -hmm. um, to help them to feel at home in their, their calling and to as also to um, to equip them, you know, we, yeah. we wanted to talk about things that that you know even the most isolated moms out in the countryside could could um, benefit from, you know, how to take care of your children's teeth or yeah. how to um, prevent colds and viruses and things like that. And so, not just to encourage, but also to help them feel just a little bit more prepared. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that motherhood comes naturally, yeah. right, and that you know what you're doing all the time. And of course, I mean it. It doesn't all the time. So I know you've helped many, many uh, moms out there, and many dads watch, watch your show as well. You also receive a lot of calls and emails. Yeah, we, we have a Facebook page, Hoyre Jaron Fuchit, and Miga, my co host, and I, we try to connect with the moms um, uh, as much as we can. And on a daily basis, um, I'll get messages from women saying, um, you know, I've just had my baby, and I can't get out of bed. I'm tired, exhausted all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I need help, you know, caring for my child, and I'm not doing a good job. Yeah. And so number one, what we want to do is say, hey, that's me. You know, you're talking about me. That's, I, I was exhausted too, you know, but it, it's okay. Um, treat yourself right. Eat the right types of foods, and you'll be okay, you know. And so just encourage them. And also other moms, you know, ask practical questions. We you know, we all want to know what other moms do and, you know. Exactly. So we have other, you know, like um, women married to someone who's not of their nationality. So like a Mongolian mom, mm -hmm. a Mongolian woman married to, you know, a Japanese man or an Italian man. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll ask questions about teaching your children, you know, what language to speak to your child in. Exactly. And what do you say to them? Well, for me, language is so closely related um, to emotions. And so language and emotions go together. And so... I just kind of go with, with what's what feels right to me, mm -hmm. and um, all my three oldest children, they started speaking in English, you know, right away, and so I thought, well, since I'm I'm American, my kids are going to start off in English. But then my youngest came along, and she was Mongolian through and through, and she did not speak to me in English at all, and so Fascinating. I knew that Mongolian was her heart language, and so I spoke to her in Mongolian, you know, and so. It's different. It's going to be different with, with each child, but just kind of go with, with what comes naturally. Melanie, what's been your favorite episode on your show? 
That's a hard one. Um, I, you, I mean, you know, sometimes you have real chemistry with the guests, you know, and, and everything just goes really well. Um, I think we've had that for the most part because we're moms and we're talking about things that interest all of us, you know. Um, but I think the guest that, that sticks out in my mind and challenges me the most was um, a mom that we, we interviewed from Dorongov. And um, she, as a teenager, lost both of her arms. And she um, thought she would never get married, never have children. Mm -hmm. She could barely take care of herself. How could she have children? Um, but she, her, her boyfriend at the time, he loved her, and he just pursued her. And he said, I, you're going to marry me. And they got married, and now she's the mom of three boys. And mm -hmm. her, all of her boys take care of her. You know, they don't have a lot in terms of, um, in terms of you know, uh, their home, the, where they live, I mean, they're, they're not rich. Mm -hmm. um, but when we, we drove down there to visit them, I was just overwhelmed. Uh, whenever she sits down, one of the boys will come up and fix her hair and, and help her with her makeup, and another kid will come and bring her something to drink. And, mm -hmm. and it's just the love that, that's in that family that, that really impressed me. Melanie, you were born in Louisiana in the States and uh, spent some time in Mexico when you were little, mm -hmm. speaking Spanish. Tell me a little bit about your childhood and then about your move at 16 to Mongolia. Well, um, I was born on the bayou and uh, in southern Louisiana, not too far from New Orleans, mm -hmm. um, and kind of in between New Orleans and Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. And so that's where my family is. And um, it's, it's a really neat place, a really special place for me. But we also spent a lot of time um, down in southern Mexico doing works there. Um, and then uh, when I was about 16, my parents told me that we would be moving to Mongolia. And so right away, I, I grabbed an encyclopedia to find out where is Mongolia, because uh -huh. uh, I, I had no recollection of learning about it. And so um, little did I know that um, it would become such a big part of my life and, mm -hmm. and tied to, to my life in such a, such a great way. But um, yeah, we moved to Mongolia. Um, in 98, mm -hmm. and I was 16 at the time. Wow. And then, and, and you've told me before, when you moved to Mongolia, you say, I hated it. I wanted to leave the minute I turned 18. But something made me stay. I wanted, uh, I knew I wanted my life to be about something bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by this? Well, when we moved here, um, <clears throat> um, my parents felt called they felt the need to be here but I didn't mm -hmm. obviously I was still a teenager and mm -hmm. um, but when I right around the time that I turned 18 and it was time for me to go back to the States to finish up my schooling and mm -hmm. um, and all that stuff I I really felt like I needed to come back mm -hmm. and um, at this point I had met my husband but he he wasn't a deciding factor in that okay right 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 <laughs> uh, we were friends but we weren't um, you know thinking about marriage or anything like that but um <clears throat> We, I got to the States, finished up my schooling, and came back. Mm -hmm. And I immediately was impressed with, um, with the need for, for helping women here. Mm -hmm. And I was a very young woman at the time, but I thought, you know, if I could do just a little bit, uh, my little bit will go a lot farther in Mongolia than it will um, in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was my, my decision come and, and work here. We chatted before when your parents moved here. You, you moved to Dachen, and they used to feed many, many, many families yeah, and, they and had help a the community. I mean, did they inspire you? Yeah, they, they uh, for a while, uh, had a feeding program, mm -hmm. and they would feed the children who were, um, you know, selling the, the grocery bags out at the markets and um, who mm -hmm. didn't have a, a hot meal to have, you know, before school or after school. So the kids would come there and, 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 and have a hot meal. And uh, uh, yeah, obviously very touched by, yeah. by their work and definitely inspired. And then back on to your husband, when you met him, you used to speak in Russian. You studied Russian before you learned Mongolian? Yeah. 
Ya mi libro gratis. Well, when I came here, I was under the impression that I would be here for a short time and then go back to the States, mm -hmm. and um, I figured that Russian would be a lot more um, useful to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's more widely spoken than, than Mongolian, and so I studied uh, Russian. I had a really neat Russian teacher, mm -hmm. and, um, and she taught me Russian. And so my husband and I, when we met, he knew English, but he wasn't very confident in his English, and so we communicated in Russian, which is funny because we both forgot all our Russian now. We don't speak <laughs> Russian. <laughs> Such a fascinating uh, <laughs> background in history, Melanie, you know? Yeah. What do your relatives and friends in America say? I mean, do they come and visit you? Do they, are they waiting for you to ever live in America? Are you in Mongolia for good? I mean, your husband's here. You've got four children here. This is your home, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, um, I think, you know, there are options for our family, you know, to live in the United States and to work there. Mm -hmm. um, but so far, for myself and for my husband, our work um, has brought um, a certain sense of meaningfulness to our marriage and to our family, and we work together on a lot of things. And so mm -hmm. um, I think if, if we had that sort of a job uh, in America that we could, you know, feel fulfilled in, then, mm -hmm. you know, no, nothing's really stopping us from moving there. It's yeah. just, you know, timing, I guess. Uh huh. Very interesting. Uh, Melanie, you moved from Dachen to UB in 2012. Do you miss living in Dachen? Oh, every day. Really? Yeah. We, we loved Arhan, and mm -hmm. it's, a, um, it's a really small uh, community compared to UB, yeah. but for me, it was the largest city that I had ever lived in, you know, and so Darhan was just the right fit for our family. Uh -huh. and, um, very safe, mm -hmm. and we uh, we really like the community uh, in Darhan, but we like UB as well, yeah. and uh, and we think that UB is a pretty neat place, and yeah. lots it is, of things happening. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, and and you know, lots of things going on that you can participate in and mm -hmm. meet new people. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, now, listen, something that's really interesting that uh, viewers of your show might not be aware of is you were homeschooled as a child, and all of your four children you have homeschooled in Mongolia. You've taught them mm -hmm. everything they know. They've never been to school. Well, my two oldest, mm -hmm. um, they've been to uh, private Mongolian schools before. Right, right. Um, because when the younger ones were really young, it was, you know, it was really challenging to, to keep up with the homeschooling and with the babies, you know, and so um, there were times uh, when we, we did put our children in school, and there, was, there were also opportunities for me to teach at the schools. And so You're also a, an English teacher? Yes. Yeah. Perhaps, it, well, you could also teach a bit of Spanish, a bit of Russian, teach me some Mongolian. <laughs> How many languages? I mean, it's four languages. Well, I don't claim my Russian any longer because I know I know some bad words. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> that I learned um, some from bad Russian words. Russian words, yeah. So Decided. I don't, I can't carry on a conversation in Russian. I tried. I visited. Uh, I was. I went through Moscow on my way to Poland last year, and I was so proud to to try off my Russian, and, and I quickly learned that I'm no good at it anymore. I use my Russian words when I'm driving. My Russian <laughs> swear perfect. words. They're, They're wonderful. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Those are about the only Russian words I know. Now listen, um, you love food, you love cooking. I, I've watched you on a, a Mongolian cooking show. Mm -hmm. Tell me about uh, what you enjoy cooking at home, and then maybe tell me about your favorite Mongolian foods to cook. Well, um, I'm from the South mm -hmm. and, um, and spent many years in Southern Mexico and Oaxaca, and so those places like southern Louisiana and then Oaxaca, um, the cultures are very similar in that people love you with food, mm -hmm. so their love language is food, you know. Anytime you get together, it's food. Right. What do you want to eat? It's, mm -hmm. it's almost like, um, hi, how are you doing? What do you want to eat? You know? <laughs> so we have this culture of food where I come from, and so I really think that um, that I have that and I spend way too much time in the kitchen. I'm a busy lady and I probably could make it easier for myself, you know, but I enjoy it. I really enjoy being in the kitchen and um, the cleaning, not so much, but the planning and the thinking, you know, if, you know, if I buy these ingredients, I can make this, this, and this. And then, and then to actually, from start to finish, it's like a little bit of creation and I enjoy that aspect mm -hmm. of it. And then feeding my family is the best. I, I, my husband will watch this and he'll be saying to himself, gee, I wish my wife thought like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Comparison is a thief. Comparison, of I know. Don't don't <laughs> don't compare me, honey. <laughs> uh, Melanie, listen. Another interesting thing about you: three out of your four children were born at home, and your husband caught them. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me why home births? Home births in in Mongolia, and that, how how were these experiences? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess you know. 12, 13 years ago, just, you know, as a, as, an, as a young married woman, I never would have chosen to have a home birth. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't even, it, the thought never even crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. And um, I have nothing against obstetricians and doctors. Um, they definitely have their place, and I, I really appreciate the good ones. <laughs> and um, I, from when I was pregnant with our first son, um, you know, I'm a new first time mom, just a really young, I was 20 years old and, and just really um, new and very naive about a few things and I probably should have prepared myself better but um, my hospital experience with him, with his birth, mm -hmm. uh, left me really um, depressed for about three months. Mm -hmm. I had severe uh, depression mm -hmm. and I couldn't, I couldn't get out no matter how much I tried and then I had, I had some really knowledgeable friends too who kind of um, um, supplied me with materials to read and who prayed for me mm -hmm. and who helped me out of that, you know, mm -hmm. and my husband was very supportive. And um, I, I didn't realize it then, but it had a lot to do with the actual birth mm -hmm. and uh, my nutrition and things like that. And so even though my next birth was just 20 months later, yeah. I felt like I was a different person because I had gone through that, come out, learned, and mm -hmm. then put into practice what I'd learned. And so um, my second birth, my daughter, she was my first home birth. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was born in the tub. <laughs> and uh, We're going to insert pictures of that. Four o'clock in the Just morning. Joking. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> sure, why not? No, no. It's, uh, <laughs> um, she was born about four o'clock in the morning, you know, just really peaceful. And, and my husband caught her. And we kind of wow. came to this um, agreement that, even if we live next door to the greatest hospital mm -hmm. in the world, you know, we would still have our babies at home because it's not a disease and it's not a sickness. And, um, you know, we prepared ourselves mm -hmm. a lot, you know, and I don't advocate home birth in any way because I know the preparation that it takes and I don't encourage people to have a home birth unless mm -hmm. they're able and willing to do the research. And you need to know when to call a doctor and uh, when, you know, everything is okay. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's really important. And then we had another home birth um, about two and a half years later, my mm -hmm. son Kenneth. Uh, and then our last little home birth, Evelyn, she's, um, she's going to be six this year. So Amazing. yeah, three home births. It's, it, is, it is pretty neat. Yeah, it's, one of the, it's very the neat. The neatest Listen, things I've done. <laughs> but home births in Mongolia, I mean, in the countryside, it, it must be not very common, but something that happens. Well, the reaction that we get a lot um, a lot of the time is, you know, sheer terror. You know, how could that be? Really? But from Mongolians? From Mongolians. But then the next thing they say is, well, Mongolians did that not too long ago. Exactly. And, and they were, you know, everything worked out fine. Even one generation ago, two generations ago, it was pretty common for, for women to give birth. Maybe not so much for the dads to catch the baby, but the women would give birth, um, you know, unassisted, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the way we think of assisted, you know, with doctors yeah. and the sterilization and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it's not for everybody, but, you know, it, it was definitely for us. Yeah. Yeah. Magic. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> hey, Melanie, listen, uh, something I want to touch on before, you say when you had your first child, you had experienced a little bit of uh, postnatal depression. I did, too, with both of my children. I'm, I'm just wondering, what is the situation with postnatal depression in Mongolia? Is it something that people have talked about on your show? I mean, it we've we've touched on it a few times, mm -hmm. and um, we we had a specialist come on. Um, she specializes in um, like preparation, like pre-birth preparation, and so mm -hmm. pregnancy, health, and exercise, and um, information, nutrition. Mm -hmm. And she's she's Mongolian, and she's um, a certified doula. She's been to the United States, and she's become a doula. And, um, and she uh, is a really close friend of mine. She, we've been friends for years. And, and I, I agree with her. She, she's of the belief that if women feel prepared, mm -hmm. the, the depression um, is not so great. Mm -hmm. But when women go into pregnancy and birth feeling unprepared, feeling like they could never measure up, 
And in many cases, it's sad, but in many cases, they leave the hospital thinking, you know, uh, if not for that doctor or that nurse or that, you know, procedure, yeah. I wouldn't have my baby. But they don't realize the great thing that they've done by giving birth, you know. Yeah. It's, it's such an amazing thing. You know, after I give birth, I feel like I can climb a mountain, you mm -hmm. know. It's just, a, you know, mess with me, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm tough, yep. you know. And so when women have been given that, mm -hmm. They think, yeah, you know, there, there's there's so much less depression uh, if you're prepared, you know. Yeah. Melanie, um, your four children have Western names, but they also have Mongolian names. Yeah. That's, what are their Mongolian names? Well, um, their Mongolian names are not a translation of their Western name. It's just names that we like. Mm -hmm. And so w they all have um, Mongolian names. Our oldest son's name is uh, Yatron. And my daughter, next daughter, her name is um, Nenden. Mm -hmm. And then we have Urnun and uh, Aizro. Mm -hmm. And so they have the one Mongolian name and then the one English name. Nice. Melanie, do you have a Mongolian name? I do. I do, actually. Um, my husband's grandmother gave me a Mongolian name the first day I met her. Um, really? she, she had trouble pronouncing my name, which a lot of people do. <laughs> but, mo do so Mongolians have a hard time pronouncing my name? Yeah. Uh, well, that's been my experience, yeah. But she, she named me Sovta, so yeah. she called me Sovt. Mm -hmm. She passed away this year, early this year, but um, she, she was the only person that called me that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Melanie, last question for the day. Uh, what do you love most about being able to raise your children in Mongolia? I think for me, the, the thing that I, I like the most about raising my kids in Mongolia is that it's still very safe. Uh, many countries in Asia are not as safe as Mongolia. Uh, the United States is also, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in many places it's not considered safe anymore. And so uh, UB is changing. UB is, um, unfortunately, the many issues are coming up as far as, you know, like human trafficking and things like that and kidnapping. And, uh, but it's still relatively safe, mm -hmm. a relatively safe environment, you know, for children. Yeah. You and your husband are very passionate about this topic, and you're actively involved in an organization called Unbound. Tell me a little bit about this. Mm -hmm. Is it an NGO that you've started? Uh, or just yeah, we, we, we haven't started it. Unbound is actually in several countries. It's based mm -hmm. in, um, in Texas in the United States. And what they do is they go into um, different countries, and they, they'll, they'll open a chapter. And what they do is they work with, with the local people um, to fight human trafficking. And human trafficking is like a $32 billion um, business a year. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's growing. It's not decreasing. And um, the thing that, um, that, that really caught my husband and my attention um, about human trafficking was a documentary that my husband had um, come to him to be translated called Nefarious. And he translated it, and I read through the script, and I just wept because mm -hmm. I knew that these things were happening in Mongolia. And through Unbound, um, we've been able to learn about human trafficking, and not just learn about it to prevent it from happening to our own children, to our own family, mm -hmm. but to, to reach out in the community and to teach people um, what it is and how to prevent it. And Mongolia used to be more of a transit country. Yes. You know, between mm -hmm. Eastern Europe and Southeastern China, and, mm -hmm. and you know, the railroad, um, different various ways women and children will be trafficked through Mongolia, but now it's quickly becoming a sourcing country. Mm -hmm. And so people are selling women and girls here mm -hmm. um, to other countries. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to do something to fight against this. And so my husband and I are, are passionate about it. And we believe that you know, when we're fighting social injustice, that it's not something that we do individually. And so we do it as a family, and we want our children to to participate and to learn about it and to be able to to stop it, you know. And mm -hmm. um, we hope that you know, as they grow up, that they will also feel passionate about you know the same sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and Unbound is just starting up here in UB, and we work with a really neat group of people who are trying to um, get into the schools, meet with professionals, um, lawkeepers, lawmakers, mm -hmm. and try to get um, uh, things changed, you know, even on, on those levels. So. How is this done? By, by raising awareness? Raising awareness is, is just one small part. Mm -hmm. um, we, we really need to reach out to the younger generation 
because, you know, the things that our parents used to warn us about, you know, don't take candy from strangers or don't go, um, don't go out after dark, you know, mm -hmm. those warnings are not very relevant today. Uh, we need to teach young school children about social media safety mm -hmm. and about, um, you know, Facebook and, and mm -hmm. meeting up with people that you've met on the internet, you know, how mm -hmm. safe is this and turning off location um, mm -hmm. on our devices and things like that. I mean, it's very simple. It seems very simple, but mm -hmm. um, when, when you look at the cases, most of, of the young people were, were either trafficked, picked up, or, or found through Facebook or through mm -hmm. some sort of social media. Yeah, and so it's important to teach um, children these things, and also parents too, because parents, we're naive. We think our kids are, are you know, we think, how could our, my kid be involved in something like that? But mm -hmm. in reality, they're being groomed or they're being, um, they're being looked at by who knows who. So we need to teach our kids to be safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And that, well, Thank you for everything you've shared with me today and, and with viewers. You have led a very fascinating life uh, and you have a, well, you're a very unique woman here. You speak fluent Mongolian. You put me to shame. Thank you for teaching me about infinitives I feel, before. <laughs> I feel so, so, I feel really honored and I, I want to say thank you too for having me on the show. And I, um, you know, I think every woman, every mom is unique. And we all have the same goal. You know, we all want to raise our kids to be happy adults. Yeah. You know, and we're going to make mistakes. We're going to trip and fall. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to suck at it some days. You know, we're going to go to bed thinking, yeah. you know, I, I'm completely messing up my kid. You know, mm -hmm. but we get up in the morning and we try again, and that's just what we do. You know, we're moms, and so if we can encourage one another and say, hey, you know, it's your maybe you're crying today, but tomorrow I guarantee I'll come cry on your shoulder. You know, and right. and just encourage one another. I think yeah. that. That's really important. Thank you for encouraging me today. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you for having me. Pleasure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, Melanie. Thanks. Suvda. <laughs> there you go. And thank you, viewers, for being with us today on Talk With Me. Hope to see you next week. But for now, bye. Stay in Darotsi.